I'm such a small speck in the universe. Will anything I even do make a difference? And even if I do anything, what's the point if we're all to fall at the end? What is to come? How will it all end? Are there others that share these thoughts? Am I the only one? What if I amount to nothing? And if I try, what if I fail? We're all encouraged to be risk takers, but what if I do fail? Will I be a failure for the rest of my life? Is it normal to fear failure? I have so much to share, so much to bring to this world, but this fear, it's holding me back. I'm just filled with ideas. I just don't know what to do with them. What if people take them the wrong way? What if people don't understand? What if I'm persecuted because of them? Have you ever felt this way? My name is Adam Binu. And my name's Ibrahim Uzbek. And we're talking about Fears, fears of, of the, the unknown. unknown. Mindless fear is greater than mindful fear. A quote by well-renowned author and consultant Idowu Kayenikin. It touches on one of the main factors that it, that's affected humans and that has been omnipresent for centuries, fear. Fear can be split up into two types. Fears of things which are generally feared by other people, like knowing the outcome of a gunshot or knowing to come up for air so you don't drown. Then there are what Kianikin calls mindless fears. Fears of things which we do not yet know, things that are beyond our comprehension. And with this quote, the author illustrates how much of a greater hold these mindless fears have on us compared to our general day-to-day -day fears. The monologue we presented represents two characters with two different, very, very different views and two very different fears of the unknown. The first character represents very existential fears. He wonders what is out there, what is the point of him being, and what he can do. He ponders on the thought of death and how it will all end. This character represents people who are frustrated as they don't understand what is the point of them being. The second character represents fears of self-discovery. He fears rejection. He fears disapproval. And whether or not he'd be able to share ideas or input to society without being judged or accepted. Now I'd like to say something. Every single person in the audience today has experienced at least one of these types of fears. And unfortunately, but most commonly, we let it get the better of us. Now, here are some two real life examples of people who broke through that fear and did not let it get the better of them. Let's call them A and B. A was a young man with a dream, a vision to create something new and better for this world, something that had never been seen before. He started off working in lowly garages with his friends and spurned on by that idea to create something new, he eventually created a product that has revolutionized the way we live today. Like many of us, however, creating something new and original was no easy task. The thought of whether his ideas were necessary or whether people actually needed this product plagued his mind. Yet, he did not let it get the better of him and has created a product that still affects our lives. Character B was just like you and me. He grew up and went to school. But one difference being, however, was how his fears led him out of this world. Perhaps literally. He was the first to leave everything behind and experience another worldly moment of his life. There was no way he wasn't afraid for what lay ahead of him. For he was the first to experience something that no one on earth would have experienced. He has become an icon through his expedition, and we have advanced so much technologically through his endeavors. Everyone on earth will know this man's name as he was the first to truly step into something out of this world. These two men were Steve Jobs and Neil Armstrong. These two men that we have just discussed about represent our two characters very well. As when Steve Jobs went into the creation of the iPhone or the iPad, he faced criticism. He feared whether people actually needed this idea and whether it would help advanced people or as a society. He did not let those thoughts get the better of him. These thoughts usually go through the mind of all entrepreneurs, 
yet it is the fact that they do not let it get the better of them that makes them stand out. Now let's take a look at Neil Armstrong. Imagine what he was going through, leaving behind this earth to go out and discover for space. There was no guarantee for his safety, nor did he know what was going to be out there. Yet he still left those fears behind and traveled to the beyond. He stepped foot onto the moon, and that's when man unlocked a new fear beyond this world. Our studies of what's outside of this world are quite scary and still to this day are not fully understood. But these men embraced their fears. And now today we have iPhones, iMacs, and iPads, which I'm sure every single person in the audience today owns at least one of. And we are also able to further understand science and learn new things about space every day. Fear gives us boundaries. They give us heights, but the more we understand, the more there is to be understood. And that's why we should reach higher and higher. Understanding that you are afraid is good. It gives you a purpose to reach higher and higher. If we knew everything, then we wouldn't need to do anything. We cannot let our fears control us for the rest of our lives. We must allow the fear to propel us into the future and allow it, uh, let it allow us to fuel our drive. So don't let that fear prevent you from achieving your goals and dreams. Because maybe one day, you'll change the world. My name is Adam Binu. And my name is Ibrahim Mosbeck. Thank, Thank you. you.